Hi everyone, I want to give you some tips and tricks about how to get and use your crafting materials the best and most efficient way when you're trying to gear up a new character in a season. I've been getting a lot of questions about, for example, how do I get my primal Kales? How do I get my good gear in general? And like how to progress the best way possible. So I want to give you some pointers about what you can do to improve it. There are several ways of how to progress with your character's equipment. Number one is just the loot that you find on the ground. So always want to pick everything up, especially when you're doing common 16 rifts, where stuff drops in all corners. So always make sure you collect everything. Then we have Kadala with the blood shards. So you can spend your blood shards here to try to gamble something. And we have the Kana's Cube where you can craft items. So there's the recipe three, which is upgrade rare item. And there's the recipe two, which is reforge a legendary. And all of these come at a different cost and they have a different like, strategy behind them of when and for what you want to use them. So the loot on the ground, obviously that's just random stuff. And the only cost there is the time invested to try to you know, clear a rift. You just try to collect whatever you can and sort out the best pieces. Then we have Kadala. So you see here in the first tab, you have the weapons, which cost 75 blood shards. There's also the rings and the amulets that cost 50 and 100. And this is way more than what we have on the armor slots and on the offense. So typically, you never want to gamble weapons, which means that we have to use one of the Kanai's Cube uh, recipes to actually get our weapons in most cases. Now in Season 27, this is a bit different because of the Sanctified effect, but you can still try to get a good weapon. I'm going to explain an example in a moment. So the main way of spending your shards is going to be on armor pieces and on offense. So especially offense can be very hard to get. Again, especially if you don't have Sanctified effects, like season 27. So in this case, you can actually just sanctify your offhand and even that may cost you hundreds of crucibles to get a really good roll like this. So usually the way to go is you gamble offhands all season long, basically. At least when you're playing a class that has an offhand, like Demon Hunter or the Int classes. So it has the Kubus, Orbs, Mojo, Phylactery. Other than that, especially early on in the season when you're just trying to get started, get your most important pieces, you want to gamble armor pieces. So in most cases, if you just want to get like any kind of set piece and then convert it with the Kana's Cube recipe 4, where you can convert set items back and forth, you can just get any of those set pieces, like the Shadow's Pants here, and then you convert them to the gloves, and then get another pair of pants, you convert them to the chest, etc. So this is how you can gather a full set really quickly. And aside from this, spending blood shards on armor pieces is also a very effective way of getting more ancient legendaries so that you can use augments on them and get extra power boost. So the augments are the 625 main start that you see here, Calder Sun's Despair rank 125. You get those from the Echo Nightmares and then you can put them on the ancient items. And ammo pieces, because they're so cheap for the blood shards and they generally have very little RNG in their rolls, are usually very easy to get. So chest pieces, for example, from sets always come with three sockets. Pans always come with two sockets. They always have the main stat. So you generally just have to roll one right stat and ancient and you're set. Then you just like, you know, reroll whatever is missing on the mystic and you're good to go. And this applies to pretty much most armor pieces besides the gloves and the shoulders. So those can be quite tricky to get in some cases where you want multiple like non main stat stats. So for example, if you want to have area damage and cooldown, and resource cost reduction on the shoulder. This is like the, the trifecta roll, and this is kind of tough to get. So most of the time you're gonna end up with a non-ancient shoulder in those cases, because it's really, really hard to get. The same with the gloves. So you usually have crit chance pre-rolled on many gloves at least, at least a set gloves. And then you just need to roll like one other stat, like area or cooldown or something. And then you can roll the third stat and you have a good pair of gloves like this. Kind of easy, but again, for example, for higher paragons, it can be really rough to get a quad factor glove where you don't have main stat. And for example, here, instead of dexterity, this could be a cooldown reduction. So this is usually a choice that you want to make later on when you have more main stat coming from Paragons and you don't really care so much about the 870 dex here. Similar to the shoulders I just described, this is one of those really hard to get armor pieces because you need to roll basically everything right and then roll off the pre-rolled dexterity to get whatever you want. So what you want to gamble really depends on what class you build you're playing and also how long you want to play the season or that class. 
So for example, when you play a very short season, let's say 20, 30, 40 hours or so, it's like your expected total time investment, then gambling armor pieces is most likely the way just to get like easy ancients as much as possible. You gamble the chest, you gamble the pants, you gamble maybe a helm, maybe the boots, and just try to get like, you know, maybe even non-ancient or just like a solid ancient, you know, shoulder and glove, and don't really care about those quad factor rolls because they're super hard to get compared to these other pieces that are extremely easy to get right. So you just want to get like decent ancients, augment them, and you're good to go. And this is how you get a good power spike. But on the other hand, when you play a very, very long season or you play your character class for a long amount of time, let's say 100 plus hours, then you will find most of those easy to get pieces by default. So just playing the game, just picking up the loot, you will find your ancient chest, you will find your ancient boots, etc but most likely you will not find the gloves and the shoulder. So that is kind of the target you want to gamble for in the long run. And then there's other pieces that are also even harder to get. For example, braces. So lots of classes and builds have some certain like mandatory braces. In the case of Demon Hunter, we have the Reps of Clarity, which can be really hard to get as well with a good roll. So this is also one of those pieces that you want to gamble for in the long run to get like a really good item roll here. So you can get away with a non-ancient like this, but for example, for LOD builds, having a non-ancient is a quite big loss. So you want to avoid that at all costs. If you're playing, let's say, a Wave of Light Monk, you need to have a good Ancient Bracer. You need to have a good Ancient Crudus Boots for this build to you know, really pop off. And essentially, the longer you plan to play a character, the more you want to focus your gambling towards those hard-to-get pieces. Because most of the easy stuff will just drop. If you're planning to go for a really long season and you play like multiple hundreds of hours in a season, it's also not a terrible idea to gamble rings, especially if you're playing multiple builds or multiple classes, because rings are pretty like interchangeable. Typically, you don't want any main stat on those, and you can use them on almost all the builds. So there are a lot of options like Focus and Restraint, Convention of Elements, Unity, uh, Oculus rings for supports, and in some cases, uh, you have like the class-specific rings with Karini and Ring of Emptiness and uh, Crispin. So there's a good reason to gamble rings, especially in the very long run, when you know that you will finish most of the other gear anyway. Now let's talk about the cube. So one thing you might have noticed is that I didn't talk about gambling weapons, and this is why we have the cube. Weapons are just too expensive, they cost 75 blood shards, and in most cases you have like dozens of different weapons that you can gamble, so it's just like a really ineffective method of spending your blood shards. Same with the amulets. There's tons of amulets, and almost none of them are used for anything, so you don't want to do this like ever. And instead, we have to upgrade rare item recipe to use on weapons, for example. So what you can do is when you run T16 rifts, you can just collect whatever weapon you want to craft, and you save 15 of each material like that, which is actually a pretty significant save, almost 30% of the total cost if you don't count the DBs. So you just throw them in a stash, and then you take them out at some point and upgrade like a bunch of them, and you can try to get a good roll like this. And there are actually some weapon types that are extremely easy to get, like the dagger on the Demon Hunter. So you can always consult the Kadala Gambles Calculator here to see what are the odds, how much does it actually cost to get a certain item. So here's like the average bloodshot cost, and then there's also the average death breath cost. And you see, for example, if you scroll down on the Demon Hunter for the daggers, there's only two daggers that you can get. There are more daggers in the game, but they're not part of the Demon Hunter loot table, so you can't upgrade into those. And this is a 50-50 chance to get the right weapon. There are some other cases similar to this, for example, for a zombie bear witch doctor, there's only two spears, or for the Raker barbarian, there's only three spears, and obviously also the necromancer with the scythes, there's only four different scythes in the game that you can get when you upgrade rare scythes. So it's extremely easy to get a really good ancient or even a primal under those conditions. In case you're not aware, the chance to roll the primal is 1 in 400, so this means that, for example, in the case of the Shadow Impale Demon Hunter, you need to upgrade 800 daggers on average to get one of each of those primals. So this will be 20,000 dBs and 40,000 of each of the other three materials. Now, that sounds like quite a lot, but compared to the prices of other items, this is extremely cheap. And the thing is that you're going to be upgrading so many daggers that on the way to that you know, expected primal, you're most likely going to end up with some really good ancient anyway, so if you have a good T16 setup with a Sage set or your follower that doubles the DBs and you pick them up consistently after every single lead pack, you get 6 to 8 death breath. So usually 
each rift is somewhere between like 100 to 150 dBs. Sometimes you get like hundreds when you find a blue goblin or a goblin pack. So you can get somewhere between like two to three thousand death birth per hour if you farm one to two minute Nephilim rifts. So it's actually just a time investment of like eight to ten hours or so to get the dBs needed in the case of like this Kali's example, to get a primal on average. Now, all of this doesn't account for the fact that you also need white, blue, and yellow materials for all of this in double the amount that you spend desperate for upgrading rares. So you have to farm those as well. And the most effective way to do so is bounties. When you farm bounties, you get, I believe, 220 combined materials from one bounty cache. So a full bounty run is around 1,100 materials, something like that. And you might pick up a few items here on the way. You're going to gamble a few blood shards to get some more yellows. So it's going to be somewhere in like the 1100, 1200 range or so. Not counting any like bonus RNG effects like blue goblins or so. And with an effective bounty party and foreman at least, you can clear all acts in somewhere between 5 to 10 minutes. And you get somewhere in the range of like 10 to 15,000 or so of all materials per hour. So while typically you do bounties for either the recipes or the bounty specific items like the Amorite Band and the Ring of Royal Granger, you actually get a lot of materials there. In addition to the actual bounty mats, which is like the main reason to do them later on when you try to reforge items. So running the bounties not only helps you with reforging, but also with upgrading RAM by giving you tons of the regular materials. And if you have like an imbalance in your materials, you can see here, for example, I have very few reusable parts. Have lots of bad crystals you can convert them back and forth so you can buy for example these white items from the vendors and then convert them in the cube or a seminar you can do this with the blue items or with the yellow items that either you gamble or you just buy from the vendors as well and you can convert whatever you need like this very easily and now finally let's talk about reforging items which is the final step of finishing your character so after you've done the grind after you have upgraded away all your death breath and you have like pretty much perfect gear this is when you start using recipe 2 on the cube, the reforge. So after you've done those bounties and you've accumulated you know, some hundreds or thousands of these materials, then you use this recipe here to finish your character. And you mainly want to spend your bounty materials on items that you can't effectively gamble or not even upgrade, like amulets or rings or you know a weapon that is not finished yet. And if you look at the average time invested for a bounty run, let's say 5 to 10 minutes, you get 22 of each act material per run, which is four and a half reforges. So every two bounty runs, almost you get one ancient item of your choice. So if you're talking about, for example, making a good weapon, then every two bounty runs you can get an ancient version of your weapon. So this is a very quick and effective method to get one specific item that you need for your build to finish it up. The main issue it has is that it has a 50 forgotten soul cost, so you're effectively hard capped on how many times you can reforge an item. Because forgotten souls are acquired fairly slowly. You see now I have 28,000, and uh, yeah, I have used a bunch of thousands for like rolling items and stuff. But generally, you acquire souls at like a pace of like two to three hundred or so per hour when you're farming like end game speed runs, like two to three minute rifts or so. This is roughly the pace. You can increase this to up to like 500 souls per hour with various means. And once you start doing those reforges, those souls disappear very fast. And in my case, with let's say I want to use 20,000 souls, keep a few thousand so I can like reroll items and stuff, I would maybe be able to craft around one primal. So the average cost is 20,000 souls and 2,000 of the bounty materials. So these are numbers that most people don't actually reach. Most people are probably going to end up with less than 10,000 Forgotten Souls in like the whole seasonal playthrough. So you can't really expect to just make a Primal with Reforging. But as I mentioned, you don't necessarily need a Primal, or in some cases you don't even need an Ancient, because if you just reroll some random amulet like a Squirt's Necklace for a non-LOD build, you don't really care that it's Ancient or not. You just want to get a good roll, and for something like that, the Reforging is superb. And this is also pretty much it for what you need to know about how to effectively gear up your character. There are some more nuances about certain items that are very hard to roll right, and some items that are very easy to roll right, for example. You can always go check that out on the on the Karada table, for example, or the Defree Panam. You see that certain items have like certain stats pre-rolled, as you can see here, as I mentioned earlier, with set gloves, they always have crit chance, for example, so it's very easy to get those. 
But on the other hand, a stone gauntlet doesn't have that luxury. So stone gauntlets are way harder to roll because they're missing this one kind of mandatory stat that you're trying to get. And the same applies to most items. So it's always worth to take a look or try to remember which items are the easy ones, which items are the hard ones, and try to invest more towards the harder to get items. Either way, hope this video helps you and now you have a better understanding of how to spend your resources the best way possible for your own progression. Hope you like this video. Subscribe for more Diablo content and I'll see you guys next time.